Hello, welcome back to this series on trigonometry using college algebra. Uh, again, we're just getting started here. We're gonna re keep reviewing uh, our algebra skills here that we're gonna need along the way. Uh, last video, we talked about factoring polynomials and today we're gonna use what we know in factoring to talk about simplifying rational expressions. So uh, some things we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna simplify. We're also going to multiply, divide, add and subtract these rational expressions. And then we'll uh, wrap it up with uh, simplifying complex fractions, which really puts all of these ideas together and is kind of the punchline here. So we will, without further ado, get started. So simplifying rational expressions. Um, so the quotient of two polynomial expressions is called a rational expression. Uh, we could use less fancy language and just call it a fraction. Um, but we will continue to use this kind of more mature language of the rational expressions here. But when simplifying a rational expression, one technique we often use is cancellation, uh, but there is no magic cancellation property. Um, some students just think, oh, it sure, it sure would be convenient if these two terms on the top and bottom canceled out. If there's one on top and one on bottom, surely I can just cross them out, right? Well, cancellation is just a shortcut. We have to have a valid reason to cancel terms. And the way I think about it is we need to find a multiplicative one. We need to be able to uh, represent part of what we're doing as just a one that's being multiplied by everything else. So we'll look at a couple of examples here that will hopefully illustrate that. Um, starting off very simple with just the simplest rational expression I can think of, which is just this fraction six over four. And the idea here is that there is something that can, can reduce. Um, hopefully just by inspection on number one, we can see, okay, yeah, there's, there's a two in common for both of those. If you look at number two here, it's less uh, apparent what is in common, uh, but this is the direction that we're going, that we can factor these um, polynomials down to their, their most basic parts. We can factor these numbers down to their most basic parts uh, and then use those to find multiplicative ones and quote unquote cancel. Uh, so for the first one here, we've got six over four. Uh, if I rewrite each number here in its most basic terms, which in this case is going to be the prime factors, uh, I would get two times three over two times two. So we can see that there are some numbers in common in top and bottom. And what I'm looking for here is a multiplicative one. Uh, if you think about the way that uh, fractions multiply, you always just multiply the numerators together and you always multiply the denominators together. So I could rewrite it like this. Normally you might think about going right to left here in terms of simplifying, maybe multiplying fractions together. Um, but in this case, we wanna work back the other way and that's gonna be helpful for us to pull this back apart because what we notice here is that there is this just big dumb one, just this stupid form of one here that we don't need, right? Now we're multiplying three halves by one. This just says one times, whoops, times three halves. And now we don't need to write that one, right? We just have the three halves. So this is the idea. We're trying to find, I always, I always like to say, some big dumb one, some convenient form of one that does what we want it to do. Uh, and then we could you know, think about canceling these back here at the beginning, which, which is the shortcut. In, in reality, what we're doing is finding this one, we're pulling it off. We don't need to multiply things by one. We can throw that in the garbage. Um, so that's what we are doing here. This is the idea. Now we will step it up and we will think about doing this with some polynomials here. So uh, if we look at this first one, we need to break these down into their most basic parts, which are into uh, prime polynomials. So let's see if we can't factor the numerator here. Um, just with some kind of guess and check by inspection, I know that there's gonna need to be an X in the first term here um, in order to get X squared, uh, in order to get the positive two, I'm gonna need a two and a one. Um, so we'll do two and a one. We're gonna need a plus sign on both of those. Uh, and I, I'm convinced that that works. I can kind of do that math in my head, multiply that back out, and I can see that we get where we started. And then in the denominator here, we've still got the X plus one. So now I can rewrite this. I can see uh, that there is a big dumb one here. So maybe I rewrite this as X plus two um, I maybe I even write that over one times x plus one over x plus one. Again, you can think about multiplying these back together. I can put the parentheses on here just to keep that visual that visual cue, but they're not doing much for us at that point. Um, but now, as you can see, we have just this big 
this big dumb one here. Uh, and we don't need to write that, right? That we just take it, throw it in the garbage. Multiplying something by one does not change the value. Um, so here's where we can cancel those things out. And what we're left with is just the x plus two over one. But again, we don't need to write the over one. Um, so in general, that's the idea. Um, when we're trying to cancel things out, we need to have a reason. There needs to be a multiplicative one uh, or else you will be breaking all the rules of algebra. Um, so let's take a look uh, some more on cancellation here. I've got a few different uh, items here. Uh, and we wanna, we wanna think about which ones, is there some legal cancellation uh, and which ones of, of these expressions are already completely simplified. Um, so if we look at the, uh, the first one here, we have 4x over 4y, and we're trying to find a multiplicative one, and I believe that we can do that here. Uh, I could rewrite this as 4 over 4 times x over y. Again, think about just multiplying those back together, and we'll get to where we started from. And 4 over 4 is just our big dumb 1. So there is where the cancellation happens. We could maybe even think back to the beginning. That is the shortcut. And what we're left with is just the x, y. Well, that looks like two boxed things, but the solution here is just going to be x over y. All right. The second one here, we have 4 plus x over 4 minus y. And I think that the, uh, the danger here, a lot of students would love to just cancel those fours. And that's what I mean by convenience, right? It would sure be convenient if we could cancel those, but that is not not a valid thing that we can do because those fours aren't being multiplied by anything. Uh, it's being The top one's being added to x, the one in the denominator. Um, we're subtracting y from it. There is no multiplicative one. So this is completely simplified. There is nothing to do there. Um, so this is what I, what I mean by kind of canceling by convenience. That's not a thing. We have to have a valid reason to want to cancel here. All right, number three. We have 4x over x plus 4. So again, there's some x's in common. There's some 4's in common. It would be really tempted to cancel some x's and cancel some 4's. There is multiplication going on in the numerator. It is 4 times x. But the fact that it's x plus 4 in the denominator means that there's no multiplicative 1 that we can find. This one is also completely simplified. There is no multiplicative 1 that we can think about kind of ripping off to the side and throwing in the trash can, as I've said a few times. So again, completely simplified. And for our fourth example here, we have 4x over 4x minus 4y. Now there is uh, some subtraction in the bottom, but that is not blocking us from finding something to cancel because I can find a common uh, factor in the denominator uh, and I can force that in here um, to find a multiplicative one. So we're gonna keep our 4x in the numerator in the denominator, I can factor out a 4, and I'm left with x minus y. Now here is my multiplicative 1. I can think about pulling that off to the side. In fact, I will. and write that as 4 over 4 times x over x minus y. That 4 over 4 is just my big dumb 1, and there's no reason to write that. 1 times anything is just that thing. So we are left with x over x minus, whoops, x minus y. So there we go. Some examples of uh, some, some cancellation, uh, where we can, where we can't. So hopefully that's helpful going forward and not just kind of all willy-nilly crossing stuff out because it would make our lives easier. We, we need to find these multiplicative ones. <clears throat> all right, so we will start here by multiplying and dividing rational expressions now that we've got some, uh, some background on simplifying and, and when it's legit to cancel and when not. Um, but we're going to perform these operations on rational expressions the exact same way we perform them on numerical fractions, which are, as I said before, still rational expressions. Uh, the terms in the numerator and denominator just look more interesting now because they're polynomials. Um, but the way that we multiply fractions together is to multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together, and then you would need to reduce. Um, when you do it with numbers, you can do the reducing at the end, but uh, it's often easier to do it first, meaning let's find common factors. We can get rid of those factors and then do the multiplication at the end here. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so if I take a look at this first one, uh, there's some polynomials that I can factor. So if I look at uh, this first one here, the x squared minus 
uh, x squared plus 4x minus 5. I think that I can get that to factor into x and x is my first terms, and then I'm going to need a uh, plus 5 and a minus 1. If I multiply that back out, I should get to where I started. Now we'll take a look at the denominator here, the 3x plus 18. I can tell that there's a 3 in common with both of those, so I can factor off a 3. What's left behind is going to be an x plus 6. So there's nothing that necessarily cancels out uh, here, but maybe we can find some matching pairs on the other side. So if I take a look here at the uh, second half, this uh, second fraction here, we have 2x minus 1. There's nothing that factors out there, so we will just keep that as 2x minus 1. And then uh, can we factor? No, there's nothing to factor for that x plus 5 either. I can get this to go away. There we go. x plus 5. So like I said, when we're multiplying fractions, we can just multiply the numerators and denominators together, and my lazy way to do that is to just connect them, and we can add multiplication there. So now we just have a single fraction, and now I can look for those multiplicative ones. So there are there things being multiplied on the top and the bottom that are the same. Well, there's an x plus 5 there and an x plus 5 there, uh, and that is all I see. So what is left is this x minus 1 times 2x minus 1 all over 3 times x plus 6. Sorry for kind of squeezing that on the side there. I'll try and leave myself more room in the future. <clears throat> on this second one here, very similar, uh, although now we're doing division instead of multiplication. Um, the way that we divide fractions is by multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. Uh, I know some, some of my students, when they come into class as freshmen, have been using this mnemonic device of keep, change, flip, uh, which doesn't prove the reason that we're doing anything, but it is a good uh, way to remember what to do, I suppose. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, but first, we're going to start off kind of the same way by factoring uh, each each polynomial here to get into its basic components to see if we can then get some things to cancel out. So if I'm looking at this 2x squared plus x minus 6, uh, let's see if we can get that to factor here. So I know I'm going to need a 2x and an x. Uh, some different ways that I could get 6 would be like a 3 and a 2. And if I multiply this out, that would give me a 6. That would give me a 4. That's not going to do what I want. Maybe if I put the 2 over here and the 3 over here. Ah, now I think that this is going to work. That would give me plus 4. So I'm going to want a plus here. And that will give me minus 3. OK, this is how this factors here. If we multiply that back out, we should get to where we started. Now we'll take a look at the dom denominator here, which says x squared minus 1. This is a difference of squares. I get excited about these. I know how these ones go. Uh, so we can set this up. I know this is going to be a plus. That's going to be a minus. We're going to have an x here and an x here and a 1 here and a 1 here. All right. And now as I write this next part, I'm going to multiply and uh, take the reciprocal at the same time. So I'm focusing on the denominator here. Maybe I'll change color to keep keep things consistent. I'm focusing on this denominator here. Uh, maybe I'll even leave the color so that we remember. Uh, and that's going to go in the numerator because I'm, I'm flipping. I'm taking the reciprocal as I'm multiplying. Um, so let's see if we can't get this thing to factor. I'm going to have x and x. Uh, this is actually a perfect square. I, I noticed this pattern here. So plus 1 and plus 1. And then in the denominator, we're going to put the factorization of the numerator from before. So again, we're taking that reciprocal. Another difference of squares, plus and minus. We're going to have x and x and 2 and 2. Uh, multiplying fractions together is just about the easiest thing that you could do with fractions because we can just multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators, denominators together. And my cheaty way to do that is to just complete that fraction bar and add the multiplication individually. Uh, now everything's being multiplied. I'm just looking for things in common, finding these multiplicative ones that I can cancel some stuff out. 
So uh, 2x minus 3, I don't see anything there. There's an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. We can cancel those. Uh, there's an x plus 1 and an x plus 1. Uh, x plus, so that's an x minus 1, so nothing there. Uh, so what do we have left behind? We've got 2x minus 3, x plus 1, over x minus 1, x minus 2. And there we go. We have a simplified uh, division of some rational expressions. All right, and now things get a little more interesting once we start adding and subtracting rational expressions. Again, we're gonna approach these the same way as we do numerical fractions, uh, which means that we're gonna need to find a common denominator before adding or subtracting the numerators. So I always think about that as fine. We gotta make everything the same size piece. Um, if I have a pizza cut into 10 slices and a pizza cut into eight slices, and I have two of this one and three of this one, how much pizza that I have, ugh, it's hard to say. But if I cut them all into the same number of slices, uh, then it's easier to tell how much pizza I had. So uh, getting the common denominator is just making everything the same size slice, then we just count the numerators up. Um, so uh, here we're going to try and get a common denominator by using some stupid form of one. This is, this is the way to do it. Multiplying something by one will not change the value, it will just change the way that it looks. So if I'm looking for a least common denominator here, that is going to be x, y, because we have an x in this denom denominator and we have a y in this denominator. So we can just kind of use those together. So in order to get this uh, common denominator, I'm gonna need to multiply a y uh, by this x, but if I multiply by anything other than one, which I can write as y over y, I would change the value and I don't wanna do that. So there I'm just multiplying by some dumb one and I'll do the same thing on this side where I'm gonna multiply by x over x. Uh, again, just some big dumb one. It's not gonna change the value, but it will just change the way that things look. So if I simplify this here, I'm gonna have 5y over xy plus 6x over xy. Now I have a common denominator. I can think about just adding the numerators together. So finding common denominators and then combining the numerators. This next example, a little more interesting. And because of the subtraction here, there's a, a component that we need to be a little bit careful and make sure we're distributing, distributing appropriately. Uh, so let's think about what our LCD he is for this one, the least common denominator. You can always just find a common denominator, but finding the least will help us uh, get to the answer a little bit quicker. There won't be much reducing to do at the end. Um, so if I factor each of these denominators, that will help us figure out kind of what we need here. Uh, let me move that over a little bit. So x squared plus four x plus four, I think I recognize this as a perfect square. So that's got x squared, uh, I'm sorry, x plus two times x plus two. This guy's a difference of squares here. Uh, so this is gonna be x plus two, x minus two. Uh, so if I'm looking for a least common denominator, one has uh, a couple of x plus twos, the other one has an x plus two and an x minus two. So it appears that what we're going to need for our least common denominator uh, are a couple of x plus two terms and an x minus two term. Um, maybe I'll finish writing what we had here and I can just use this. So six over that minus two over that. Um, so what is missing in uh, the, the fraction on the left there? We are missing an x minus two. So what I'm gonna do here uh, is, uh, let me go back. Let me start this one over. Starting this one over.
All right, so taking a look at the second one here, uh, we need to find a least common denominator. So it might be helpful first to uh, think about think about how each of these factor apart. Uh, if we take a look at the first one here, x squared plus 4x plus 4, uh, that's going to give us x plus 2 times x plus 2. Um, and if I take a look at the second one here, that's going to be x minus 2, x plus 2. So I'm trying to find uh, the least common denominator is going to be uh, what's the, the smallest number of terms I can have so that ev all of our bases are covered here. Well, I'm going to need at least two x plus 2s to account for that first denominator. The second denominator already has an x plus 2, but what is missing is the x minus 2. So there is our LCD. We found it by just investigating our denominators here and just kind of figuring out what was missing. So if I rewrite this now, uh, I'm going to have 6 over x plus 2, x plus 2, minus 2 over x plus 2, x minus 2. So now, uh, to get that least common denominator, what is missing from this denominator? Well, it's missing the x minus 2. So we can kind of force that in here x minus 2. Now what I wrote in blue there is just a big dumb 1, right? I've just multiplied by 1. I haven't changed the value of anything. I'm just changing the way that things are looking. Uh, on the right hand side, I'm missing another x plus 2. So we will force in an x plus 2 by just multiplying by this big dumb 1. Whoops, a little, little squozing in there. x plus 2. Uh, and now we can try to distribute things out. We have a common denominator and then we can subtract our numerators. So maybe I'll create a little visual separation here. Uh, so distributing in this numerator is going to give me 6x minus 12 all over our common denominator, x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2 minus uh, distributing over here, we're going to get 2x plus 4, again over our common denominator, and this takes a minute to all write out, but uh, it is important. Now that we have a common denominator, we can simply subtract our numerators. So let me just write out that common denominator again, x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2. I'm changing the order as they're written as I'm writing these, not on purpose, I'm just I'm just kind of going as I'm looking, but because of the commutative property of multiplication, we can write that denominator in any order uh, as long as all the terms are there. But now I'm going to have 6x minus 12, and I need to subtract off this entire other numerator here. I need to subtract off this whole thing I'm putting in orange. So 2x plus 4. So as I do that, that's going to leave me with 6x minus 12, uh, minus 2x. Well, I'm running out of room, so I'll do a little bit of this in my head here, but 6x minus 2x is going to give me 4x, and now I've got negative 12 minus 4 after I distribute uh, to that 4 as well. So that's going to give me minus 16. I can factor a 4 out of both of those, uh, and then the bottom here, x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2. Now technically, to be to be correct, I should factor a 4 out of the numerator as well, um, just to make sure that, that there's nothing else that cancels there. Uh, I ran out of space here, so again, I'll try to make, make sure I'm leaving more space in the future to finish these problems. Uh, but that is the idea here, is that we need to find a common denominator, and then we will add or subtract the numerators individually. All right. So now we are kind of at the punchline here, which is simplifying uh, complex rational expressions or complex fractions. Uh, so a complex rational expression is a rational expression that there's going to be a lot of this rational expression word here uh, that contains additional rational expressions in the numerator, the denominator, or both. Um, so there's just fractions on fractions on fractions, which is why they're called complex fractions. Don't let that term scare you. There's nothing, nothing. Uh, 
too complex going on, um, but it's just the fact that there's a bunch of fractions here within the fraction that makes it quote unquote complex. Um, so what we want to do here is eliminate any of the rational expressions that are in the numerator and denominator so that we just have uh, a polynomial on top, a polynomial on bottom in the numerator and denominator. Uh, we have a couple different methods to think about doing this here. The first one is called the reciprocal method, uh, and that's going to mimic uh, just the division of fractions where you would uh, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Um, what is kind of sticking, sticking in our way here is that um, we can't take the reciprocal of that denominator because we can't take the reciprocal of two terms independently. That's not the same. So we would need to make that denominator a single fraction first, and then we could take the reciprocal and multiply by the numerator. Um, so what we're going to need to do here, um, what I'm trying to say, is we're going to actually need to subtract what is in the numerator and subtract what is in the denominator and join those into single fractions. Um, so let's go ahead and hop in to doing that first. So <clears throat> focusing on the numerator here, uh, there's a Q and there's a P. So my least common denominator here is going to be QP. So uh, what do I need here? I'm going to need uh, another P over P on this side, and I'm going to need a Q over Q on this side here. So if I just, just do that numerator for now, that's going to give me P squared over PQ minus Q squared over PQ. All right, now we'll focus on the denominator. And the next step will actually combine combine those. Uh, in the denominator, again, we're going to have a least common denominator of uh, QP. So I'm going to need a P over P here. There's my big dumb one. Q over Q there, a big dumb one. Uh, and if I multiply those together, I'm going to end up with P over PQ minus Q over PQ. Now I've got common denominators everywhere. I can start start combining. Uh, so that's going to give me p squared minus q squared over pq as my numerator, and then my denominator will be p minus q over pq. Now we have just a single fraction in the denominator. Now I can take the reciprocal of that denominator and multiply it by the numerator. So I'll come, come down over here. I've got p squared minus q squared over PQ. And instead of division, we'll turn this into multiplication, and I will take the reciprocal of that denominator and write PQ over P minus Q. Uh, as I said before, multiplying fractions or multiplying yeah, fractions or rational expressions is just about the easiest thing that you could ask for when it comes to these types of things. Um, we can just multiply all the pieces together here. And now there's some things in common. There's a PQ there and a PQ there, and we can cross those out. That just makes a big dumb multiplicative one. And I'm left with P squared minus Q squared over P minus Q. Now what we might notice is that's a difference of squares in the numerator. That will factor into P plus Q times P minus Q all over P minus Q. Now, again, there's a multiplicative one here. There's a couple of P minus Qs, and we're left with just P plus Q. So again, this is the uh, reciprocal method. It uh, mimics the way that we typically multiply, or I'm sorry, divide fractions, which is multiplying by the reciprocal of the de denominator. Uh, we just need to do a little work first to be able to take that reciprocal. Uh, the second method here is called fraction busting. I didn't come up with that phrase. One of my, my colleagues did, uh, but I, I certainly like it. Um, this is a nice, a nice method. It, it almost just cuts to the chase of what we're doing here. Um, it, it, does, it won't always work. Sometimes one of these methods will work better than the other. Um, but this one typically can be kind of nice. Um, although, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't always work. So it's good to have both of these methods in your back pocket. Um, so the idea here is we want to bust all of the fractions uh, in the numerator and the denominator at the same time. And by bust, I mean, let's get rid of them. Let's make things cancel and make things reduce so that we're just left with a single term, uh, uh, meaning a non-fraction term in the numerator and a non-fraction term in the denominator. 
Um, so what we want to do is find the least common denominator of every smaller denominator in here. So again, um, our LCD, uh, we have a Q, we have a P, we have a Q, we have a P. Um, and so our LCD here is going to, again, just be PQ. Now, instead of focusing on each one of those little fractions and, and combining them and then taking a reciprocal, what we're going to do is look at the larger fraction. And I'm going to multiply the larger fraction by this big dumb one that looks like PQ over PQ. Now what I'm going to do is multiply and distribute to each of these. And we'll see that some magic will happen. Um, the, the busting will happen here. So if I multiply um, this first guy here, we're going to end up with P times PQ over Q. And distributing the second half here, we're going to have Q times P, Q, all over P. Now, hopefully you can see that there's some things that are going to cancel there. Um, let's go ahead and just keep doing this. We'll look at the denominator as well. If I multiply to this first term, I'm going to end up with P, Q over Q minus, distributing the second half here, P, Q over P. Again, we can see that there's some cancellation that is going to happen. So let's find these big dumb ones. This Q is going to cancel with that Q. This P cancels with that P. This Q cancels with that Q. This P cancels with this P. So what is left here? We've got P squared uh, minus Q squared. That's all that's left in the numerator. And then what's left in the denominator is P. This is supposed to be a, a P. It looks a little funky. P minus Q. And if you think back to the last problem that we had here, we ended, we ended up with this at some point right here. So we've essentially just kind of skipped to this step, which is why this fraction busting method can be, can be nice. Uh, and now it finishes the same way. We can uh, factor that numerator. It's a difference of squares, P plus Q, P minus Q, all over P minus Q. Those P minus Q's terms cancel, and we're left with the P let me write that a little clearer, P plus Q. So we get the same answer either way. Thank God, math works, uh, we're, we're okay. So uh, at this point, there's nothing left to do but go and practice some of these. Uh, I wish you well, uh, and I'll see you in the next video.